Greetings, everyone, and welcome to episode 46 of Chronicles of a Nonprofit. I'm Dr. Darina Shine, and today you are joining me on the Chronicles of Non of the Nonprofit podcast. And I'm grateful that you're all here. I hope that you are elevating to shine your brightest light upon your community. And one of the things that I want to talk tonight about specifically is shining your light. Because when you shine your light, what happens is others may get blinded by that light. Others may not feel the same vibration that you may feel about the bringer of light. Because the light is the truth. The light is the connection to the relationship to your most high, to your higher being, right? It's valuable when you can go within and you can find the the power to shine when everybody else around you is sleeping on you. They're sleeping on you, eating on you. <laughs> They're sleeping off you, eating off you. And yet they, they want to tell you what they want you to know. <laughs> they want you to think that Everything is gold, golden nuggets, and it's, they're all lies. They manipulate, they narcissistically gaslight, they make you feel as though you are mentally challenged, and it's because you are the light bringer. You are shining your light, and everybody is not trying to be awakened by that light that you're bringing. You know, the scripture that says iron sharpens iron and your friends should sharpen your friends. That includes family members. That includes sisters, brothers. If you are not in alignment with the individual in which you are connected to, somebody is selling themselves out, selling themselves short in order to be with someone, just to have someone. Is that feasible for you? Does that help your light shine? Entrepreneurs, when you have a specific gift that is given to you from the Most High, the power from within that gift is to shine a light and brighten someone else's journey, to let them know that this obstacle that we face called life is going to constantly give us something if we're willing to accept it. But we got to be willing to accept it, willing to embrace it, willing to go through the challenges. Most people aren't willing to do that. That's the reason why most businesses fail within the first five years, because they do not want to go through the growing pains of existence. Think about millionaire companies, million dollar industries. How many times do they rearrange their mission by putting new things into action? Now, mind you, not rearranging a mission, but staying consistent with the mission that was already brought from the beginning, because that is where the genuine truth is within the revelation of what it is you see through manifestation for yourself that is going to create your greatest version of who you are, that is the very connection to what the closeness of truth really is. So your mission statement should never change. It should only be generated through your practice. It should only be given that opportunity to move and become alive. If something is still sitting there the same amount of time that you've been sitting there, it's not growing. Had a perfect example. I have funds coming through uh, today that was supposed to hit, you know, so that we can move into our next phase. And only to find out, only to find out Nothing moved until I moved physically. Nothing moved until I moved. And when I moved, 
that's when things started getting paid. Things started getting streamlined into revenue in all directions. And I recognize that that is what it takes in order to maneuver life through the, the challenge of, of being the one, the light bringer who brings the truth. What are your thoughts? This is a pre-recorded. I just had to get on tonight because I am going to be extremely busy tomorrow and I didn't want to miss an episode. You know, it's important that we understand that when we have our friends around us and these friends, they want to know about where we are, what we're doing, how we're doing it. We have to be very mindful and we have to even be extremely careful in how we talk about our success. Let me tell you, entrepreneurs, sometimes the very people that are connected to us are not trying to look at the success the way we look at it. You know, I had a a young woman talk to me the other day and she was an only child and the way that she reflected with her family and her cousins were to constantly be the giver, constantly giving, 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 expecting them to be the reciprocating force that would give back. But like I told her, there are times when as people, we want to give so much just so others can take. And do we really want that? Because genuinely, we want reciprocity. We want mutual benefit. That word, that term was introduced to me today. And that mutual benefit is where everyone feels good about the exchange. And if somebody is giving up something, the other person is giving back in return. That is the most fulfilling business relationship that one could have a mutually beneficial one. And I know it is common sense, but many of us are not common when it comes to sense. So we have to learn how to allow ourselves to grow in the midstream of where we're going and just let our light shine and stay in our lane and do what we do and don't care about what's going on around the corner, do not go competing with other individuals and organizations and getting, being here, being there, being everywhere. Mm -mm. You don't get the job done. It becomes inconsistent when you are everywhere because you have no home. There is nothing that you can call your own. You're just a wanderer in a land that can, where you can make gaslighting com- compliments and comments and suggestions and ideas. And then what do you do? Have something that is tangible, a structure, have a foundation. A, even if it's in your mission statement, have a foundation. Absolutely help. Help in an absolute form. But also remember that you must have a place that you call home. You must have this this place called a corporate office, a place that you can say is your own. And you must have them in many areas, in many areas. So it's empowering for me to see my entrepreneurs moving and coming to the mindset that it is time It is time to create that unique idea. It is time to create that motivating force that pushes you beyond the channels of the things that constantly keeps you bound, keeps you broke. You know, I sit back and I look. The way that we are consistent in our business is that we get up every day and do something specific for our business. It's just like having a child. How can you not nurture your child with morals, values, ethics, going to the bank, taking money out of the bank, going to take care of their food, going to take care of their health, 
going to take care of their education, socially impacting them. If we cannot nurture our business, then our business, it will be neglectful. We will be neglecting what we do. We will be neglectful as parents. And that is not what we're here to do. And I don't care if you have a business at the age of 12. That means you are a parent to your business. And if you're not doing the best, the ultimate best to your business, you're manipulating situation. And that's teaching you how to be less than in your business. If you're 25 and you've just started your business, and you decide that you only want to visit your business once a month, imagine that being your baby. Your baby would not be nurtured if you only visit your baby once a month. You want to take them out to the mall once a month. You want to feed them once a month. You want to give them some moral teachings once a month. That that child, that business is not going to grow. So what I say to you is that you have the power within you to do this because you've already motivated yourself to get up and want to do it. So if you got the power to want to do it, you got the power to dream the dream. Get the power to be consistent. Get the power to get up. Even if you know you got other things to do in the morning, project yourself to know that you're going to spend an hour a day for however long it takes for you to do something for your business. And if you don't do anything for your business, entrepreneurs, I dare you to tell yourself, well, that's another fall, but tomorrow I'll, I'll get back up. If you tell yourself that every day, I fail Tomorrow, I'm going to get back up. I fail, even if you don't do it for a week, and acknowledge and be accountable that you fail. So when you get back up, what's going to happen? Eventually, you're going to be like, damn, I need to stop. I need to just go ahead and just stay up. <laughs> I need to just go and spend one hour and commit that time to the thing, the very thing that I gave birth to. This is called empowerment. This is called non-neglectful entrepreneurship. And it's your ship and you're the captain of it. And you got to steer it the way you feel you need to steer it. Who's responsible for your success? Other than the person who is the director, CEO, project manager, employee, a team makes a dream work. Teams working together creates a dream full of the things that is going to sustain everybody. Because guess what? Eventually you're going to have to feed yourself that day. I'd rather have enough to feed myself as well as pay my bills. So I better be putting a lot of irons in the fire, keeping the fire hot, keeping people um, warm and comfortable where I am so that they will continue to want to come back. Sit back and see the glory of your shine. Don't forget that. Sit back and see the glory of your shine because others have tried to take it away from you for far too long. And you can do this. You can shine to the greatest capacity because others are not doing it around you. Don't mean that you have the right to forget that you are growing to be an entrepreneur. You're growing to excel in whatever capacity you're in, whether you're a student in the classroom standing up for your rights and letting put in a light to shine on that career path you're going, whether you have to talk to your teacher and tell your teacher 
this information is outdated. At what point do we get past slavery? At what point do we get past victimization? At what point do we get past the things that no longer seems to matter or should matter in the 21st century, but for fear of keeping us isolated, keeping us uh, feeling inferior, we no longer want that life. We don't deserve that life. We don't deserve a time where we're constantly talking about uh, the women's suffrage movement because the movement we all know about. And yes, each one reach one, each one teach one, but not to the degree where it's constantly being badgered into our heads, but nothing positive is being badgered into our minds and our thoughts. Creative expression. Remember, mutual beneficiality. If it's not mutual, then somebody is getting over on someone else. Is keeping us in the concept and the mindset of slavery constantly employing teachers? Is that what's happening? To have some event or some historical aspect to be taught? Because teachers are the rulers of education. And if they're continually talking about something that is not, that should be non-existent in today's society, that is outdated, then they are responsible and they need to upgrade themselves, period, point blank. And if they're not doing it, it's not their fault. They're making their wage. They're getting paid. They're getting paid to tell the same story. And it's so unique. Everyone knows the story. But it's how we as entrepreneurs, through our educational aspects, through what we sell, through what we build for ourselves, we'll tell the story our way. Not the same way that the system of 1940, 1930, 1920 has been teaching history. And I just di digress. I go back because these are concepts, educational concepts that I want you to think about even in business, because education is a very valuable, vital part of ma manipulating and moving through the stories that you're going to tell to your clients, to the people that matter to you. You know, at what point do you feel that I can use my example to be the reason why I feel that we should be more successful when we're entrepreneurs and we should be shining a better light, a greater light, something that is going to sustain someone else and give them hope and not take it away and put them in isolation and darkness and depression because they tried to stop you. They tried to stop you how many times, how many times did people come and tell you, oh, you just don't, you're not ready yet. Oh, you're just not equipped for that life. I was once told before I went and enrolled in college, when I watched the di A Different World with Kadeem Hardison and Jasmine Guy, I wanted to be in that world. It was interesting to me. It was fun. So I went to college. And when I enrolled, while I was waiting on my SAT scores to come back, the very first thing I was told by the very significant other that was in my life, the closest one to me, the one that went to work and made sure that I had everything I needed, was the very one who told me because he was not equipped for this life that it was a different world and it wasn't the world for me. Now we can take that and we can say that he was doing me a favor, helping to prevent me from going into debt with student loans or whatever. He was there to be my supporter because during that time, you know, women, liber women's, women's liberation was on the move. And, you know, you know, it was all about keeping the woman empowered and throwing the male away or whatever it was at that time. 
that was happening back in 98, 94, somewhere around there. You know what was going on. You know the the climate. And they still had that women's suffrage movement perspective of burning the bras in the 1960s to, to now standing up. And the men did not have a place, supposedly, with an educated woman, let alone an educated Black woman. So they wanted to steer us away, keep us pregnant, in the kitchen, and at home. But today is a new day. It is a new time. It is a new era. Mutual beneficiality. Mutual benefit. So I want you to think about that. The mutual benefit of being who you are, being independent, and not being shut down and put a dark dome over your bright light because someone wants to stay in the dark, because someone wants to just sleep comfortably in the cocoon of the birthing canal and continue to stay there, but yet live in reality of the physicalness of who we are. And then choose not to grow, to be the best that they can be, to be their greatest version of who they are, because they have been told, they have, they have been told that it's a different world. If you go over here, it's a different world. But who says that you can't go over there and test the waters and see if it is a different world? And if it is a different world, maybe it's the best world for you. Because I guarantee you this much, the very man that took care of me, that got me through college, that helped me, you know, rear my my children, are is the same man who is no longer here. He passed along early. If I had a, if I had have allowed him to control my destiny and all of his ability to help me the best possible way that he could at his given experience which I bless him and I thank him for all that he did for me. Every choice that he helped me make and being there for me, I thank him. But I also thank myself most importantly, because without me standing up, I would not be able to exist in this realm without him because he would have made me incompetent. He would have made me dependent. And with the dependency, you can never validate a growth. You can never maneuver yourself to where you can feel that you can help someone else because of the fact that you see that you have to heal and help yourself. So the majority of time would have been spent with him, but the other time would be spent grieving him and not living out the destiny of what I should have been doing. How many of us are sitting there wishing that we had started our business a lot earlier than we did? Wishing that we just had a, went to school when we had the time, when the kids were young. Now the kids are grown and gone or now, you know, Things have happened. Life has changed. The pandemic has come. Shut things down. This is a whole different world than what it used to be. And now we have situations. We have situations. So this is something I want you to think about. I want you to think long and hard. I want you to get in your journals. I want you to write down some things that make you think about what I'm talking about. Is it is it a bunch of just talk that I'm speaking right here? Or does this move you? Does this motivate you? Does this empower you and inspire you to say, damn, let me just think. Let me take a breather and get into a class of something on YouTube. Just listen. Just listen. You know, teach me. Show me the way to surrender 
to my love, to my love for self, to my exploration of who I'm going to grow to be. Who am I? Who are you? When no one else is looking, when you don't have to come into the mentality of let me just tell them whatever I need to tell them to gaslight and shut them up. Let me tell them, oh, it's not real. What you see is just a, you know, (laughs) what you think is, is not. How about this? And I'm going to leave this this analogy and then I'm going to let you go. A child lies to his mother because he's in his addiction. And he tells his mother, what you think you saw, you did not see. And it happens to deal with video games. Sometimes you're so obsessed and in that world of video gaming until you can't even see somebody standing over your shoulder actually watching you because you're so busy trying to look and see how you can sneak and get it done. When the reality of it is, when you're in that addictive mode, you're not even caring who's watching. You don't even care what happens. You don't care what consequence you're going to have. You don't care anything about it. It's the same thing as an adult. How are you going to run a business and not care what your employees are doing? Not, in, not care what your independent contractors are performing. What type of work ethic are, do they have? Are they going to weather the storm through the partnership in quarters, not year to year, but in quarters, in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days? Prove to me you are who you say you are and that you're not a clown in a suit pretending to be this person that is so professional, but yet you have the clown suit on and you're telling me you're in your best garb. This is what some businesses look like in today's world. They look like they can't even tell you what a mission is if they're not duplicating a service. How about you don't give them anything to even duplicate? They have no idea what is taking place because business is everywhere. Business is all things. Business is all people. Business is conversation. Business is podcasting. Business is all of that. And business is also meditation. And with that, I thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and being a part of this podcast. Thank you to all of my entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs who will sit back and look at this video and really, really let this sink in to your spirit. Let it get into your soul. Let it be known that you are not alone in the struggle. When people shine a light on something, it brings others out of darkness. And sometimes that darkness is the cocoon in which they choose to remain in. Let them remain there, but keep doing what you do. Keep shining your bright light. And as always, we'll see you tomorrow.